Her lips which whisper like reeds on the wind, wet with moisture, sprung from a well deep within. Whispers like the petals of an iris, the reedy blossom which weathers and is not trodden down for long. I'm going to pick this up with line 587 from book two. Uh, it's Orion over there. Uh, you can see the belt. Armando the Golden, a sight to behold, unsodden, nor tainted by vice. What sight beckons doom, what voice that should boom, though it squeaked and was rivaled by mice. Armando the Just, the face you could trust, but so could the other guy. Stacked like a vault, and honest to fault, of evil non-silence could buy. Iconoclastic and somewhat bombastic, what truth would he serve in the end? For gathers and gains would be all in vain, should terror rule over the land. For who could foresee where blind honesty would lead, a trick for the devious to play? The quick of the mind you'll fathom in time, your own rules will you ultimately obey. Betrayal by the numbers, no spell you were under, a verbiage you'll be but a tool. Dispense with the zeal and stick with what's real, for fell honesty leaves you a fool. A foresight consider one's actions hither, how may they change fellow destiny? Of short-sighted nature, blind honesty's strictures, gaze on and consider what is best to be. But no, not Armando, fast to his credo, for not to tell lie, lest I die. What innocent nature of would-be betrayer, what hammer of war for the wicked to ply. Fell Burgundy Iris, or Moses Cleveland's Canterbury Tales, Book 3, Line 601. Of divine glamour, the two-ended hammer, the intent of the hand that would wield it. For thus does explain the divine signatures ingrained as smote into works of great evil. A real piece of work for the devious to spur, for who is the danger more near? To himself, thought old Fred, as the light came to end, I think I'll have but one more beer. To dispel any riot stood Morpheus the giant, in the corner of the bar by the door. A considerable brute, although somewhat mute, easy he was to extort. Lame at the tongue, he spoke to but one, in words Jenna alone could decipher. He had but one vice for which to entice, crab apple cove, apple cider. For which to harrow, it came in a barrel, to which, no, he never could say. Or ibble, figgle, sibble, jibble, noggle, floggle, oogle, og, which likened and meant much the same. He hailed from far west past the northern rim forest, as Oceanside be by the sea, beyond goblin hills and primordial thrills and wilderlands riddled with peace. Like June it grew wild with considerable guile, an incurable tenacious disease. It spread with great ease, this bold fell disease, till Ishmeth provided the cure. Fret not for now, this pox has gone south, what trials too soon will endure. Considerable woe Morpheus did know, for want of right words was he harried. But who was to listen, and this thought incensed him, far more than linguistic barrier. Lacking retort for moron for short, or tall, as he was oft introduced, which might have brought tears in earlier years, winked he as if somewhat bemused. Anger beyond reckoning on call at one's beckoning was Morpheus, the simple-minded giant. Despite the abuse, he stuck to the rules, engaging just those non-compliant. With nary a whimper, he kept things quite simper, festooner of buffoonery, dispeller of riots. For Lindria, no tight lips would forego, for silence from her mouth meant danger. Endure the razor tongue, stand fast and don't run, for fury was just in her nature. With passion comes peril, the margin dwindles narrow. Between expression and explosion, go not thither. Affronted you'll find, though not by design, a rage that could virtually blister. When expression is limited, the tension does build to culminate with awesome crescendo. Dare not you broach, nay do not approach, the subject with fraudulent innuendo. For hollow illusions draw dramatic conclusions, is not tragedy but romance tales up. What fell shallow promise or meaning not lost, as absent it was for commencement. That table of deal had better be real, what garnish for to beautify a meal. When ground into pulp, tis still not enough, for marriage what pact for to seal. 
equal value both sides for love to abide lest one-sided currency debase of coinage top heavy such frauds for it be ready for who could esteem double for face what flip side devalued by much greater volume of embellishment engraved on the top side what godlike demeanor or regal foe dreamer too great for mere mortals to quantify the one-sided coin that seeks to purloin is overvalued deflates into tragedy pusillanimous praise from quavering knaves a fluster with vigilance and pageantry always be keen of flip side unseen as weighty the balance does tip listen to me in my fists you'll not see so saith ladandria the lip a life full of laughter can easily be had a spin of the coin but it be a lasting occasion the comedic equation equal parts romance and tragedy Ladendria was funny of love and of money but don't let her scare you a bit her intentions were true but know that she too ate more than her share of bullshit accounting for taste there is no disgrace of someone enough cannot get keep what you can of those near at hand and know that there is no sure bet dark and quite pale by appearances frail thin small boned if not brittle impressions were made which oft anchored jade considerably lithe if not little not close in line but of the same vine was claudia's near distant niece not similar in appearance despite distant nearness or frequent not nearness a period of peace what peculiar cant of those who enchant choppy and guttural unvain the forest dialect for to dissect the goblin tongue was somewhat sane to untrained of ear it would like appear ventured claudia when questioned on cant and roots analekleth where town is but be veth so v though v sounds like b in parlance more closer to seed was goblin indeed alekleth with ramado and slant with latter realm broken the tongue lent unspoken vague perceptions of a day somewhat distant well before our time indeed even mine 533 for the fall nine nine hundred years for jargon deaf ears to fall before indifferent to call in hushes i'm told that speech near as old is heard in the vileness drachmar perhaps older still this cant that lacks frill from the bowels of dark and cropped spar what pinnacle did broach as the earth sank below in the calamity of 533 the stone that was mined became walls in good time black citadel and fortress to be disaster of state for fortress abate to whom for these ramparts to thank amidst chaos considerable he came upon hither a stranger they called Jorian frank clad all in black his only companion a raven like hued on his shoulder <clears throat> young he appeared with a tendency to leer though his eyes belied something far older <clears throat> a duke yet to be his grandsons would see elevations in power and rank yet homes be in ruin about they lay strewn what recourse for nature's fell prank what dynasty to sire to rebuild the empire to order restored brick by brick of this new order like dark and fell mortar held fast by stone heavy and thick what bargain was made with price to be paid to render such walls ever standing with tab not in coins with were such stones enjoined what bondage for mortar outlasting sorceress for hire eve would conspire to plunder the riches of legend pale like a wraith with unnatural grace resembling a denizen of heaven flowing white hair in garments austere with simple gold draped round her neck the part she resembled as party assembled past trials to ponder and reflect the captain i'm told was skilled with his bow as to the men he commanded as were as were the men he commanded how well would they fare unless certainty was there with loyalty the currency demanded and i'm going on 10 minutes i think i'll stop there i'll pick it up with uh well we'll go back to line 671 um Hope everybody has a great day. Thanks for listening if you are. And, um, yeah.